Welcome back. Uh, we are continuing our study on angels. And uh, me and Brother Eric, our pastor, just got through doing a, I think it was like 40 to 50 minute video um, or podcast on angels. And I'm sure we're going to make that available to you real soon, uh, probably next Monday. And it's just a fascinating study. You know, angels are the more and more, you know, me and Brother James are talking about it. The more and more we study into it, the more fascinated we are, like with just how things work and how God has done things. And that's where the focus should be. It should be on how amazing God is. You know, we put a lot of focus on, oh, the angel did this. And even other religions, you know, they put on, oh, the angel delivered this to me and and all these different things. And the angels are, are really cool. We've talked about entertaining angels unaware, and you never know when you could be talking to an angel or helping an angel, which the emphasis is just helping everyone. And then sometimes, you know, I believe God could put tests in our lives and angels in our lives to say, okay, like, let's see if you're going to help this person. And it's a test maybe sometimes. And so I think we should help everyone, but it's just really cool. But that should just show us how fantastic of a God we serve to, for him to be God over all of the angels and all of the cherubim and the seraphim and then all the seven to eight billion people that are on the earth and the, the beautiful world that we have. We have an amazing God, and that's something that we should um, never cease to be amazed by. But um, if you do have your Bibles and you want to turn with me, turn to Genesis 28. I uh, want to start off with a fascinating place in Scripture in reference to angels. And I know we've talked about a bunch of different facts about angels. A lot of it's going to be some quick thoughts today, so please don't get bored with it. Um, this is all Bible, and and uh, it's a blessing to be able to have Scripture. A lot of people don't have Scripture. And so for us to be quoting that and sharing these things out of the Word of God that you can check yourself, that's something you should be grateful for. You're not in China. You're not in different places where they're changing the Word of God, and they're um, like they're rare on the word of God, where you're having to, when a box come in, they're rushing to see who can get a Bible first or hiding Bible. You get to have a word of God sitting right in front of you. Many of us have multiple, and so we should be excited about it. Genesis 28, um, we have a fascinating story in Jacob. I've been reading a book about Jacob lately. Um, obviously, the Bible is a book about Jacob as well, but um, another book, and Jacob's story is fascinating. Just from the deceit, just everything that uh, Jacob's went through um, with being second, being uh two nations in the womb, grabbing the heel, and and just everything that happens. But he ends up getting the birthright, and he ends up leaving. He's running for his life. All these crazy things are happening, but God is still with him, which is a blessing that despite mistakes that we've made, that God still chooses to, to help us and to do these things. And we come to a fascinating place in Scripture, Genesis 28, where not only angels are mentioned, but we also have a ladder mentioned. Now, this isn't just a regular ladder. This is what we call Jacob's ladder. And and uh, when we talk about it, uh, generally speaking, but this is a ladder that reached from the earth. And I'm going to read it, Genesis 28, 12. He lays down to sleep and he gets a vision and it says, and he dreamed and beheld a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reached to heaven and behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. So on this ladder, they're ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac, and the land wherein thou liest. To thee will I give it and to thy seed. And, and I believe, you know, after Jacob's mistake, this ladder was here for multiple reasons. Number one, I believe, to remind Jacob of the gulf between uh, his soul and God. Uh, he's reminded the separation of how, of, of how much the separation was, but he's also reminded that his soul can still come back to God despite sin. There was a, a ladder that shows the connection between uh, the earth and God and that connection between his soul and God, just despite his wrongdoings, despite his deceit, despite all these things that are happening. But I want you to notice a cool cross-reference to this in John chapter number one. John chapter number one, in verse number 51, we're about, we're about to connect this to the angels here in a second. But John 151, he's talking uh, to Philip, and he's talking to Nathaniel, and he said, what good things can come out of Nazareth? And Jesus starts talking to him, and he said, I saw thee under the fig tree. And uh, and then Nathan's like, you're the son of God. You're the king of Israel. And and he's like, you, you believe thou, even though I've, I've said this, you're going to see greater things than this. But you believe that because of that? And then he goes on in John 1, 51, and he says, And he said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter you shall see heaven open, and the angels of God descending or ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. 
So when you see a cross reference, you see a a ladder that's mentioned that's connecting earth to heaven. And you even have Job that said, I wish that I had um, a, um, a daysman that would be between God, that would understand the things of God, but also would understand the things of men that would connect the things that are in heaven to earth. And Job is saying, man, I wish that he says that in Job chapter number nine. And then that, when you cross reference to John 151, Jesus literally replaces that ladder with himself. Jesus is the ladder. Jesus is the one that connects heaven to earth and has made a way for us to get to where we are, to get to where he is. And uh, what, what a blessing that is that Jesus has made that way for us to do that. But some other really cool things that I want you to notice in Genesis 28, Jacob, he sees this gate of heaven. So he says he sees a gate, but he but heaven is not open to that time. But when you look in John 151, it says, hereafter, you shall see heaven open. So you see uh, what's once a gate that's there that he saw. And now you're seeing a heaven open all because of Jesus Christ. But you say, my God, what does the angels have to play in this? Well, we've established before um, that angels take part in um, people when they pass, believers when they pass. And so they're constantly, it's, it seems to speak that the angels are doing this in a present state. Like it's something that's consistently happening. They're uh, descending and ascending. Uh, and so I believe they're coming down here to do things. And we see sons of God presenting themselves. We see angels uh, reporting to God in scripture. I think the angels are descending and ascending back and forth because they have tasks that they're doing. They have messages that they're delivering. They have things that they're reporting. But also, I believe they're bringing souls to heaven as that part of ascending and descending. And you, you, obviously, you see that in Luke 16, 22. You see that John 151 here um, and uh, Gen Genesis 28. But also, you know, in Hebrews 114, they're sent. So I think they're dis descending. They're sent to be ministering spirits. And you see that in Hebrews 114. So I just wanted to kind of share that uh, very fascinating uh, passage of scripture when it comes to talking about Jacob and they're ascending and descending. They're always actively doing something and uh, being able to go back and forth in front of God. So here's some quick uh, more things that some of the other th other things that the angels do. So they blind the mind of lost people. We we covered that in the podcast here recently. Second Corinthians four four. You know you see Mark four. The word of God is being uh, sown. But then you see the devil tries to come take it out. And then the thorns that come up, the cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things, trying to get you distracted. And they're trying to blind you from seeing uh, these principalities are. You have good angels on one side and you have bad angels on the other principalities. And this one is rejoicing when sinners repent. You see in the presence of angels and of God, angels are rejoicing. But then you see them over here, they're trying to, to trip you up. And so they're trying to blind you. They're trying to get you to focus on the cares of the world. They're trying to get you to focus on yourself and other than what God would want you to focus on. So they're trying to blind the mind of lost people. They're trying to lie to believers to try to confuse. 2 Corinthians 11, 3, Galatians 1, 8, 1 Timothy 4, verses 1 through 3. They watch how little ones are treated. Uh, I think that should be a very comforting um, verse for those of you who do have children or those of you who do have um, kids that, it says that their angels do behold the face of God, talking about children in Matthew 18, verse 10. And so I think that should be a very comforting uh, passage of Scripture. Now, I don't know if we all have guardian angels, but it's just a really, really cool passage of Scripture. Uh, they watch us either confess or deny God, Luke 12, 8. So you have, I was mentioning good and bad angels, and we're going to cut, we cover this on the podcast that we're going to make available to you. But you have good angels that are reporting to God. They're watching whether you submit to God and if you follow God. And they've been around for thousands of years. They, they've they seen, that, and I'm sure they're saying that we've seen this episode before. We've seen, well, all this stuff happened before. Please just make a right decision. And they're rejoicing when sinners repent, when people follow what God would have them to do. But you also have other angels and the devil, Revelation 12, that's trying to accuse you before God, trying to say, man, these guys aren't submitting. They're not following God. You, they say they're Christians, but we see how they live in public, or they, they we see how they live in private. And so they're watching. You have accusing ones, but you also have other ones that are reporting back to God, and they're saying, man, just follow God. Just do what's right, and they're reporting to God also. We have them watching and rejoicing over sinners repenting, Luke 15, 10. Uh, we have them watching and attending the death of people, Luke 16, 22. We kind of covered that already. 
Um, look with me, if you would, the Hebrews chapter number one. Hebrews chapter number one. I want you to look at, uh, see a perspective of angels. We were talking about angels um, in scripture and how they're they're seeing things and different things. When, when you look in Hebrews one in verse number 13, it says, but to which of the angels shall um, said he at any time, talking about God, sit on my right hand until I make that enemy's thy foot. So I was saying, I didn't, I didn't tell the angels, I didn't tell the angels to to sit. Which one am I telling to sit? And then he goes into Hebrews 1 14, one we mentioned, are they not all ministering spirits? So they're not, they're not like God. They're not there to sit and to make commands. They're the ones being commanded to. They're the messengers. And so they're the ones, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? So you're ministering to people um, who have gotten saved. You're encouraging. That's what they're there for. They're supposed to go out and encourage. They're not supposed to just sit back like God and make the commands. They're supposed to be the ones being commanded. They're the messengers. It says, therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. So God, and, we, and you see this in Scripture, angels brought the word to us, Hebrews 2, verses 1 through 3, Acts 7, 53, and, Gen and Galatians 3, 19. God gave the, the law and gave the word to angels, and angels gave it to Moses. And it's a fascinating thing that you have there. And when it talks about in, in Hebrews 2, verses 2, the word was given, it was a steadfast word, but a lot of times people don't obey that word, even though it was given uh, in that fashion. It says, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto them that heard them? Uh, verse number five, for under the angels hath he not put in subjection the world to come, whereof we speak, but one in a certain place testified, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him? Or the son of man that thou visitest him? This is, they're quoting Psalm 8. That thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crownest him with glory and honor and didst set him over the work of thy hand. So I believe angels are sitting here watching all this. Like, why are you, why are you even paying attention to man? Look at how they are. You know, we're angels. You've made them lower than the angels, but yet we've put the, the earth in subjection to, to us and uh, allowing us to be over things. And it says, thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet, friend, that he put all in subjection under him. He left nothing that is not put under him, but now we see not yet all things put under him. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels. And it goes into seeing what Jesus Christ did for us. And they're watching all this for thousands of years. It's, it's an amazing thing to me that they're seeing all this. They saw Noah's Ark. They saw... Samson. They saw uh, the children of Israel making their decisions, and and they're watching all this. And they're no doubt. It's like watching someone make a mistake. You know, but James he helps counsel people, but Eric different people. And you know, people are about to make the same mistake over and over. You've seen it a million times, and you're like, please don't make that same mistake. Imagine angels who have seen thousands of years of stories, thousands of years of perspectives, and they're saying, please don't make that mistake again. And they're watching all these things happen. And just the perspective that they seem watching us as man. Angels are watching us to see if we do anything in part, 1 Timothy 5.21. Uh, angels are watching our submission to witness, 1 Corinthians 4.9. And as cool as angels are, you know, I've mentioned this before, and 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 we're, we're getting close to being finished today. Um, we should not worship angels. The emphasis should not be on angels. They should be on how wonderful God is. In Revelation 22, trying to worship an angel, they said, don't work, bow down and worship me. Colossians 2, 18, Exodus 20, uh, verse number three. The devil has never tried to make man believe that there's no God. He's just tried to get you to think differently about God. And I mean, you see that in Romans chapter number one, making an incorruptible God into corruption. You see that in Genesis three, the devil trying to make you think differently. And that's what he's trying to do with all these different religions. He's trying to get you to put your focus in the wrong place. Focus on these angels in this religion, Mormonism and all these different things, Catholicism, we're praying to angels. If we can get you focused on everything but Jesus, then he's set. If he can just get you off a little bit, then, then you'll be way off in the long run. I think, I can't remember if it was a ship or if it was a plane, but you just move your direction over an inch. It may not be look like a big difference at the beginning, but over the course of that whole journey, you end up way off course. And that's what the devil wants you to do. He doesn't want to make a huge adjustment. Oh, no, God, which the, they're obviously that's a, a blindness that people face. 
but he wants you to get you to think differently about God that uh, and get your focus off of Jesus. So we talked about angels. We went over a lot of things when it comes to angels and all three, the podcast, the other lesson I've done, the part one. Now this is the part two. But now we're going to talk a little bit of facts about demonic spirits and, and devils, fallen angels. Um, some of them are unchained. So we have we see that there's some, uh, some are chained. Second Peter two four and Jude one six. It seems to be the ones that are chained are the ones that were involved in Genesis six. The ones who went down and laid with the daughters of men. Those seem to be the ones that are chained. But there, there's some that are unchained that are still doing a work. Psalm seventy eight forty nine, Ephesians six twelve and Revelation twelve seven through nine. It seems to be that those are ones that left heaven at some time. Um, but are still doing the work of, of Satan. Um, there's some devils that are bound um, in the Euphrates River, Revelation 9, 14, to be used uh, in the future in the tribulation. Um, uh, we see four demons lead an army in the tribulation of 200 million. So four demons lead an army of 200 million in Revelation 9, 15. Uh, demons play a big part in uh, killing the, the majority or the most of the world, the tribulation, uh, just crazy stuff of how they're used on the devil's part. Um, just like God has used angels, the devil's using uh, principalities and powers. Um, this is some crazy stuff, but demons have are said to have, um, when we're talking about the Re book of Revelation, a, a body of a horse, crowns of gold on the head, faces like men and hair like women, teeth like lions, breastplates of iron, tails like scorpions, Wings that produce great noise. This is all Revelation 9. These demons are mounted on hellish horses, horses that have heads like lions, breathe fire, tails like serpents. And uh, and in Revelation 16, 13, some demons look like frogs. So this is just a lot of crazy stuff um, of how the devil has used these things. And they're going to be used in the tribulation to, um, to get man um, off course and to... Um, abuse man and uh, to to torment and do things like this um you see their purpose um in the the distinction between the angels and them um they attempt the the devils to prevent for answers to prayer daniel 10 we see michael um came to help daniel um, to get that prayer across but you also had um opposing principalities that were trying to keep that from happening but michael the archangel helped that prayer um so you see both parts of that you see devils that are trying to hinder the spiritual things but so it's a literally but the james said it the other day is literally a spiritual battle when you're praying and michael is helping that prayer go through they attempt to hinder understanding of god's truth also in daniel 10 and then uh they carry out satan's will first timothy 4 revelation 9 revelation 16 they spread false doctrine uh first timothy 4 um you see this whole outline the, it's like doctrines of devils whether it's concerning marriage the second coming the necessity of keeping God's law, and also just false gospel, gospels. They're trying to get you to believe differently, not trying to tell you that the Bible is just, just completely disregard the Bible, but they're trying to insert doctrines and get you to believe differently than what's true. So what all, what all, you know, what does all this show? You know, because it's, it's crazy stuff. I mean, like sometimes scary stuff, um, but I, it's like I started at the beginning. This is just show us how amazing God is. You know, when we, we'd mentioned this before, one angel killing 185,000 in one night. I, I was talking to uh, Brother Micah. He's uh, someone on staff here. I'm sure you know him. And um, he was saying that he did the math on that. And he said it would have been that angel would have killed eight people per second for a solid six hours. Like that's that's how much of uh, that of work that angel would have had to have done. And obviously it probably was way quicker than that. I mean, it, or it could have been that long, but that's how many a second that they would have, he would have killed. It would have been eight per second for it to be six hours uh, of, of kill. It's just crazy um, about the angels. Um, we also see another crazy story. I mean, Brother James are talking about this in second King six, there was a battle and Elisha, uh, God has told Elisha, there's more of us than there are of them. That's what God told Elisha. And Elisha said, basically said, God, I know you said that, but do you mind proving it? Would you mind opening my eyes? And in 2 Kings 6, God opens up his eyes, and he sees horses and chariots of fire around all the mountains. And Elisha's like, okay, all right, I see what you're doing here. It's it, it's an amazing thing. You know, we also have mentioned before about how angels were carrying uh, believers and carrying people after death. Um, to where they're supposed to be. Um, you know, another fascinating thing in 2 Kings 2, verses 12, it says 
that, you know, Elijah was carried. We all know this. Elijah was carried in a horse and a chariot of fire. Very interesting comparison there. But when it, we always know that he was in a chariot of fire and he was carried to heaven. But what I didn't notice before, me and Brother James were looking at this, it literally says in 2 Kings 2, two uh, verses 12, that there was not only a horse and a chariot of fire, but there was a horseman that was there. So that that could be interesting if the angels are carrying people to, it doesn't say how they carried him, you know, they could carry him physically um, by holding, but also we could be carried away, which is so cool to think about, in a chariot of fire to be able to go to heaven, um, which seems to be like what happened to Elijah and what could happen to us as well. It's just a very fascinating thing um, to be able to even think about. I mean, other things, we, we, we talked about it. We talked about how angels could potentially be over weather and how they have power over some physical things, you know, how the angel went down and stirred the pool of Siloam and and had emphasis on that. How we see in uh, Revelation chapter number seven that the angels could affect the wind. Um, we we see how um, uh, an angel, a messenger of Satan, brought physical ailment to Paul that I believe was his eyesight. Second Corinthians twelve seven. Um, we see in uh, the book of Job how Satan has fire come down to kill livestock. So he had power over that. He also even controls a great wind in Job one to knock over the tent on his sons. And so we see here how some angels, how some uh, beings have power over a physical thing that God has allowed them um, to have, which is a very, very fascinating thing. Um, and even in angels, Daniel, in angels in Daniel chapter number 10 and the book of Revelation seems to be that some angels are over provinces and in the book of Revelation, how angels are over churches. And so it's very interesting how angels are being used at different things. I don't know if angels are some angels over weather. I mean, we even correlated that to how people in the book of Exodus had gods for different weathers. Like this is the God of thunder. This is the God of the wind. This is the God. And we think about all these things, but what if what they were getting wrong was not that there's a bunch of different gods, but what if they were getting wrong that God, there was one God, but he used angels for different things. And then they automatically associated that to God. That, that's just a very interesting thought. So this is a really just fun study on angels. Very, very fascinating stuff. But there again, it should show you, and this is the end of this. We're about to jump into eschatology today, me and Dylan are. But this is just fascinating stuff to show how amazing God is. If this is what wraps around God, you know, we're studying the theology, the, the, the beliefs surrounding God. This is one of those things. It just shows you how amazing God is. And so thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope this was a blessing to you. Hopefully this was a help um, just with thinking about some of these things. And I look forward to you just tuning in more and uh, being able to learn as much as we can together as we dive into God's Word. So thank you so much for joining, and we'll see you later.